All right, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, We're here at another presentation of uh, Strip Club. Not what you think. If you've tuned in for something else, you'll be disappointed. This is about fabric and quilting and thread. So I'm going to show you a new pattern that uses two and a half inch strips. It's called Margarita Sunrise. Do you? The name is all wrong for the colors. You know, we, we have rules when we, when we name a pattern. Don't name it after a season and don't name it after a color because that's all you'll ever picture. You know, if something is called hash browns, which we do have a pattern named hash browns, such a great name, we let the rule, we broke the rule. But with hash browns, um, you will only picture browns, but it's great in lots of other colors. So we broke another rule today. We named this Margarita Sunrise. Even this has no margarita colors to it. But this is my latest collection with timeless treasure called Tonga Nutmeg. It's pretty, isn't it? Somebody described this as um, the perfect combination of fall into Christmas because it's got those fall colors, but it has the deep reds and the greens that take you all the way to Christmas. Now, these are most definitely my colors. As a redhead, this is where I live. Um, really pleased with the collection, and I think it looks absolutely lovely in uh, this quilt. Would you like to see how Margarita Sunrise comes together? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, it is a tube technique. For those who know our strip tube ruler, you probably saw immediately this is going to be a strip tube ruler. This is only good with a ruler. <laughs> I had everything together today. And yet, I do not have a strip tube ruler. But I know a little elf will come to my aid. Elf. 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 Elves are coming. All right, strip tube ruler, only the large one works with this project, not the small one. So this is not a strip tube junior friendly uh, pattern. The first thing you do is you collect your two and a half inch strips. If you're using a pre-cut bundle, um, then uh, you don't have to put much effort. Just collect the pre-cut bundle. You also need a, <laughs> she's kind enough to offer me a ruler, but that is, not our, that is not the ruler. This is the ruler. Yay. Oh, did we break the tip? I guess. I know there's another one, but I didn't want to take any more time. Yeah, that's okay. This will be perfect. Um, if you break the tip of your ruler, replace your ruler, <laughs> especially for this project. Um, all right, so we start with two and a half inch strips and then we have a background fabric. Can you see the background fabric in the quilt? It's the celery green. So, you know, background we often think cream or white. It doesn't always have to be cream or white. In this quilt, it is celery green. You will be working with full width of fabric. Full width. Full width. Full width of fabric. <laughs> and over here, I'm going to do it in different colors. You will sew two strips with your background fabric like this. What pattern is that? That's gorgeous. These fabrics, this is my next collection. Ooh. I know, tease, right? Yeah. So um, in this case, the background fabric will be this light blue, and then we pull from the strip sets. You do not have to put little numbers on yours. That's just for me to keep organized. So please don't write one. And <coughs> it's not necessary. So a bunch like this. Then you're going to take two and put them right sides together to create a tube. Tube looks a little like this. Here's your background, your two strips. This is the back of the strip set. On the other side, we have <coughs> background and two strips. These are right sides together. <coughs> Notice, background goes against the strips. The strips go against the background. It's important to do that when you make your tube. If you do something different, you will have a different quilt. <laughs> and we take our strip tube ruler. Are, are, are we ready for the, um, for the interaction? The, the uh, in-studio audience interaction. Okay, so we'll take the measurement and we're going to place the, the measurement on the bottom stitching line and cut up and down to cut out a triangle from your tube. 
Your triangle, triangle will look a little bit like this. Pull the triangle away from your strip set and open it up to get your diagonally pieced square. Brilliant! That's pretty good. Not bad, you guys. Oh, I have to tell you, we're designing another pattern. We have named it Brilliant. Oh. The irony is it doesn't use the ruler. Oh. <laughs> I'll show it to you a little later on. You're going to love it. OK, kids. That's your block. Thank you for coming. So if you know our strip tube ruler, you know the next step is to cut off of the top stitching line. To show you in another way, we have just cut away this triangle. And now we're going to take our ruler. Notice that it's the same angle, but you want to make fresh cuts. So you'll place the stitching line on the, uh, the line on the top stitching line and cut out your triangle. Why do you want to make fresh cuts? You want to make fresh cuts because you want the uh, second block to be accurate off of this top seam, not this bottom seam which you cut. Plus, I don't know about you, but sometimes I may wiggle when I cut. And I don't want to exacerbate that wiggle and have all of my uh, blocks incorrect. So fresh cuts uh, allows for more accuracy. The $10 tip, if you don't already know, this is an awkward cut. So we know we have to cut off of this top stitching line. Let's just make it the bottom stitching line by flipping our tube like this. Now it's the same stitching line as it was. And you can keep the ruler in the same place. Makes for easier cuts. So go up and down your strip set, get a bunch of blocks. They look like that. Press all the seams in one direction and stack. Then you're going to assemble and put your quilt together. Now it's set on point. Now oftentimes I say, look at the quilt, tilt your head, and you're going to sew your blocks together by a diagonal rows. Today I'm going to show you what that means. Are we good on the block? Yes. It is pretty, isn't it? All right, I have it all laid out here. A very good friend of mine taught me, put a pin top left, pointing left, you'll always know that's the top left block. So whenever you're sorting and arranging, you know that pin always signifies top left. So I've numbered these two, one, one, row one, block one. There's only one block in row one. Two, one, row two, block one, row two, block two, row two, block three. I had to write those out three times because I kept getting them wrong. <laughs> so this will create the first three diagonal, the first two diagonal rows. Let me show you. I'm going to come over here to the corner of the quilt. One one. one, one, thank you. Two, one, two, 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 three. Now, each of these rows will be finished off by a setting triangle. Your setting triangle looks a bit like this. You will have to cut a large square. I highly recommend getting a large square ruler to cut your large square. Thank you. This is called, this collection here, which um, Linda just complimented me on. This is called Tonga Boathouse and should be coming out later this year. So now we have setting triangles. When we sew this row together, we will sew the setting triangle with 1-1 one, one with the setting triangle. And we'll do the same thing with 2-1. Stay. Okay, so now you can see how the rows will finish off with a setting triangle. You'll notice there is something missing up here. 
That will be your corner setting triangle, and that goes on last. All four corners will go on very last. When you sew these three together, you line up the bottom edge, keep that edge flush, and you'll have points that stick up. You need to make that edge flush simply by cutting away those triangles. Then it will be ready to sew the rows together when that time comes. Okay? So that's just a clearer example of how you set any quilt on point, how you lay it out and how you sew the rows together and then put them together. The very first time I saw a quilt on point, I thought it was like Y seams or there was some magic. Or <laughs> it's really not. It's just diagonally pieced together, same piece together by rows. So once you've sewn your blocks together, you can trim off your edges to even them out. And then I highly recommend whenever you have a, a quilt on point that you measure the width of your quilt in three places, get the average, and then piece your border, side border strips to that size. This will help keep it square because a uh, quilt on point tends to shift a little because maybe have a little bias in there. You'll add border one and then border two. In our case, border two is the same fabric as our setting triangles. Yours doesn't have to be, but it can be. It's pretty though, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. Simple block, goes together <laughs> quickly. It's a perfect way to show off a strip set that you're absolutely in love with. Plus, it uses the tube technique, so it goes beautifully fast. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Ah, good question. Background fabric, rhyme or reason. Yes, you are going to alternate your blocks. Let's look at row one here. This was one one, right? Mm -hmm. Notice the thick part of the background because every block will show a larger piece and a smaller piece of the same background. In the, the, this row, the bigger one will be on the right. Now if we look down to this row, it'll, the bigger one will be on the right, then the left, then the right. So they will alternate. Another way to look at it, if you're laying it out on your bed or if you have a kind husband that moves the furniture aside so that you can lay out your quilt, which Maureen will show you a quilt later on. Stunning. He did. Her husband moved away the furniture. Notice on the, if you look at these five blocks that create the outer part, they all go the same direction. That thick one is always on the right. Now look at what we might call the alternating block. This is the one that only has four per row. They're all on the left. And then the bigger row, the one that's five, the, the background, the thicker background piece is on the right, the smaller one on the left. So that does alternate back and forth to create the pattern. It's got so much movement. I just love this pattern. Yes, ma'am. But you did the one that is right here differently. No. no. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now it matches, but it's the same, same. They alternate. Nobody's going to grade. Yes, ma'am. What size is the block? It's in the pattern. The block <laughs> size is in the pattern. I don't. I don't remember numbers. <laughs> All right. Any, yes? So you set it on points, but your, the display right there is this way. How the, do you get it this way? So when you sew this row together, you then angle it and sew the next row together. They will fit so it makes this quilt. So really, we've laid it out. We've laid it out in a way that we can see it, but it really is like this. Oh, I, I went too high. Oi. <laughs> yeah, so it's the same. It's just easier to assemble it when you do it when you do it at a straight set, but it's actually going to be angled. It's the same thing. Here it is, 45 degrees different. Can I rearrange them any other way? Can you go any higher? Uh, can I go any higher? <laughs> no, I cannot go any higher. It's okay, I can. <laughs> any other questions? How about the one question I always get asked? Do you have another colorway? I do have another colorway. <laughs> Yes, 
Now this lives up to the pattern name. So there's your Margarita Sunrise. Although seriously, Margarita Sunrise would be a little more blurry, don't you think? <laughs> That's a good question. What size is this? Can someone help me? This is a throw, and then on the wall is a twin. And the one on the wall uses 40 two and a half inch strips. So that's the size you can make with a strip pack or two juniors if you're buying timeless. That was the lap, three by four. This is a lap. Thank you. Three by four lap. Which is 46 by 58 inches. 46 by 58 inches. Which is about right because I'm 60 inches. <laughs> Pretty, huh? Lap. No, I know, but is the um, fabric? Did it start as a pre-pack? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it did. So there's a good example of Marguerite Sunrise. Now, if you'll indulge me a moment, can I show you some other quilts that use Tonga nutmeg? Yes. yes. Oh, I often say that my latest line of fabric is my favorite line of fabric. This might be hard to replace. I just love these colors. So we're going to go all the way to the corner over here. And this has been a classic pattern from when we started Strip Club back in 2004 or 5. Yeah, can you believe we've been doing a pattern a month for that long? This is called Autumn Braid. And is it not just a perfect way to use these strips? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Autumn Braid. Um, I believe that one also uses 40 strips, and you just need a, um, a focus fabric, which looks like it's the background, and then uh, a nice black for the sashing, or, yeah, for the framing strip. Yeah, and we're going to pause for a moment and really just, I love this one. <laughs> this was designed by um, Susan Ziegler, and it's still, it's just a, a favorite, constant favorite. And you can see in front here, those fabrics are the, from the collection, Tonga Nutmeg. And then, if we go to the other one, to the, my left here, this is a pattern called Tongan Escape. It can be done as a single pattern or a block of the month. So in this, this is designed by Sharon Craig. And each of the blocks, there's 12 different pieced blocks. And then the finishing includes the alternating and then the setting triangles. These setting triangles are magic. Make the quilt just for that. It's so cool the way it comes together. So um, each of the 12 blocks, the pattern is very simple and it comes with four fabrics from which you make two blocks. So those two blocks will be the same block in the same fabrics but will look very different. So now I challenge you to find Blocks that are the same with the same fabric but look different. I'm not going to quiz you. <laughs> but I, w I want you to study it and, and come talk to me later if you find them. So Tongan Escape, there's six blocks and then the finishing. So this is one of our new patterns using uh, Tongan Nutmeg. It's pretty, huh? It is pretty. Yeah, another one of my favorites. All right, so we have Margaret Sunrise. We have Autumn Braid. And we have Tongan Escape, three very different quilts using the same fabric. Is that fun or what? It's fun. Yeah. Do I have any questions? <coughs> I have no questions today. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, you guys. I appreciate you coming. Let's get to together next month, and we'll do another pattern for two and a half inch strips, eh? Yeah.